Happy Homebrew Wednesday, everybody. SJ Poor here at Little Face Brewing, coming to you in front of a bunch of fermenters. <laughs> so what I have out here is actually a coconut porter that I brewed for a friend of mine, which needs to be kegged up. And I have the keg cleaned down there. And I, uh, if I feel like it, I might do that this evening. If not, I'll do it tomorrow. It's not hurting anything sitting there. Nice looking beer. Nice looking beer. You'll see that I use the real fancy carboy covers being a paper bag. Paper bags are great because you can write a bunch of notes on them. I have notes all around. You just cut the top off and, and you have all kinds of good stuff. It'll help you with your, you know, keeping track of where your beer is. These two fermenters I have in front of me right now are what are the topic of today's Homebrew Wednesday. So what I did was I took the yeast that I fermented this beer out of and I fermented this beer. So what I did was while I was brewing this over the weekend, um, I took the yeast cake that was from this beer and I went on top of it with the next beer. So this one's dry hopping. This is another Laurel uh, double IPA. I took the Band of Brew Tubers recipe, tweaked it just a little bit. I used the brew bag as my filtering system in my mash tun. Uh, so shout out to brew bag. Go and check their products out. They are fantastic. So this beer was brewed with the brew bag as you know in my mash tun. It is now dry hopping with Laurel Hops from Yakima Valley. This is another Laurel Double IPA. Same recipe, done with my regular mash tun. I put the manifold back in, went old school on it, and uh, I'm doing a comparison of the two beers to see how they rack up against each other. So. When I was brewing, I actually I racked the beer off of this yeast cake, put it into this fermenter. I had already put my two ounces of floral hops in the fermenter and just racked right on top of it. And then immediately I ran my next beer in on top of, of this yeast cake, which was huge. Now you can see it built a really nice big krausen. You can do that. Um, hell, I wouldn't be, I, I wouldn't, it wouldn't bother me at all to go on top of this again with another beer. Um, I'm not going to, but I'm probably going to go ahead and save this yeast cake because it is the uh, Mangrove Jack New World Strong Ale res, or, uh, yeast. Mangrove Jack makes a fantastic set of dry yeast. If if you're not a fan of dry yeast, Mangrove Jacks will make you a fan of dry yeast. It's fantastic. So I just wanted to touch base on that a little bit to let you know that you can save money you know, by going on top of yeast cakes and if you've got similar beers, um, you know, there's no reason why you can't just go right on top of you know, on a yeast cake. Save yourself some money. If you want a quick fermentation, it doesn't get any quicker than that. This thing was rocking and rolling within a couple of hours of pitching on top of it. It was incredible. So uh, there you have it. I just wanted to touch a little bit on what you can do with your yeast. I want to give a bit of a shout out to the brew bag for this beer. I want to give a shout out to Yakima Valley for both beers. And I want to give a shout out to Mangrove Jacks for creating great dry yeast. And while we're at it, we might as well give a shout out to whoever makes paper bags because they make great carboy covers. <laughs> so there you are, a quick homebrew Wednesday with a little bit of homebrewing knowledge to spread out there for you folks. This is SJ Port, Little Face Brewing. Enjoy the fruits of your labor, folks. And brew beer. Brew wonderful beer.
Cheers.